Good morning and welcome to worship here at North Springfield Church. Whether here in person or at home on the internet, welcome this baptism of the Lord Sunday here at North Springfield Church. If you're here in person, please be sure that your phone is off. Thanks to all who donated to our mitten tree. A total of 29 pairs of mittens, 26 knit caps, and three pairs of socks were delivered to the Ritzman School on Tuesday. This is our last winter worship here in the sanctuary. Next week, worship will be in the social hall of the Christian Education Building. It's warmer there, easier to enter from the parking lot, and absolutely closer to the coffee pot. <laughs> Choir practice will be there in the hall beginning Wednesdays at 1030. The adult Sunday school class continues at Goodyear Heights Church. Class runs there from 855 to 925. Have we any more announcements? Okay, seeing none, we'll continue. Tomorrow, as we have done every year on the third Monday of January since 1986, when it was established as a federal holiday, our country will pay tribute to and honor the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s achievements as the chief spokesperson for nonviolent activism in the civil rights movement to end racial segregation and his efforts to establish equality for all, no matter their race, gender, age, or handicap. The Reverend Dr. King was a Baptist minister and a great advocate of change through nonviolent civil actions based on his Christian values. As a civil rights leader who championed justice and equality for all people, Dr. King was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace for his contributions to world peace, as well as the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the Congressional Gold Medal for his especially meritorious contribution to the security or national interests of the United States, world peace, culture, or other significant public or private endeavors. Dr. King was a great speaker, and even though his life ended much too soon by an assassin's bullet, his powerfully moving inspired and inspirational words and messages continue to be pertinent and to resonate with us today. Words and messages such as, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. No one is free until we are all free. And injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. To honor Dr. King's life and legacy, tomorrow Americans are encouraged to observe the holiday, not just as a day off work, but as a day of service to others in civic and community service projects. Today, as we here honor Dr. King for his faithful, devoted, and dedicated Christian leadership, let us stand for a brief moment of silent prayer praying that his legacy will continue to influence our country and our world in the years to come. Let us stand. And now let's continue our tribute by joining together in singing what was one of Dr. Kim's favorite hymn, Dr. King's favorite hymns, hymn number 684, Precious Lord, Take My Hand.
Let us join now in the call to worship. The voice of God resounds upon the water. The Spirit of the Lord hovers over the stream. The Son of God is named Beloved. And all who worship shout out glory. Ascribe to the Lord majesty and strength. Let us worship God in holy splendor. Holy God of glory and majesty, as we open our ears to hear the story of your son's baptism, open our hearts also that we may experience again the renewing power of rebirth in the Holy Spirit. Inspire us in this time of worship, we pray, that we may claim our own identity as your beloved children. In Jesus' name. join with me in the litany for baptism, which is written in your bulletin. O Christ, by your epiphany, your light shines upon us, giving us the fullness of salvation. Help us show your light to all we meet. Lord, have mercy. O Christ of glory, you humbled yourself to be baptized, showing us the way of humility. Strengthen us to serve you in humility all the days of our life. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, by your baptism, you cleansed us from our sin, making us children of God. Give the grace of being a child of God to all who seek you. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, by your baptism, you sanctified creation and opened the door of repentance to all who are baptized. Make us servants of your gospel in the world. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, by your baptism, you revealed to us the glorious Trinity. When the voice from heaven proclaimed, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit descended upon you like a dove. Renew a heart of worship within all the baptized. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep us, your children, born of water and the Spirit, faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
we come to the font to remember that the font connects our confession of sin with the cleansing of our baptism and with our baptismal call every day to new life in Christ. As we remember today the baptism of Jesus, we rejoice that we too have been baptized into the family of faith. Our lives have been committed to the way of Jesus. Yet, we have wandered from that way of life. Confession allows us to turn around and rediscover the path God intends for us. God of glory, we confess that our lives have not glorified you. God of justice, we admit our complicity with systems of injustice. God of light, we are aware of the shadows we create that keep others from seeing you. All inclusive God, we repent of our narrow vision and our tendency to exclude. Purge us of the idols that keep us from full commitment to the way of Jesus. Let us take this time of silence for personal reflection and confession. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The prophets testify that all who believe in God's messenger receive forgiveness of sin through his name. We believe that Jesus is that beloved messenger with whom God is well pleased. Through this one on whom God's spirit was poured out like a descending dove, We know ourselves to be beloved by God, forgiven, and freed. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please turn to one another with words and gestures of peace and reconciliation. Those of you at home, the peace of Christ be with you. Glorious God, when Jesus was baptized for your healing mission, the heavens opened and your Holy Spirit descended upon him. As these words of scripture are read, send your spirit to us that we may hear and translate your word into deed and follow Jesus in the paths of justice, right relationship, and peace. Amen. Amen. Hear these words from the book of Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the Lord, God who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it. 
who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in a responsive reading of Psalm 29, which is written in your bulletin. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a cat, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory! The Lord sits in the throne over the flood. The Lord sits in the throne as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Teach me how to love. 
Thank you, choir. And Rob. <laughs> A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. Let us listen for what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. <clears throat> Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized... Just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us today as beloved children, that we may hear and believe the good news of Jesus Christ, your word made flesh. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is Matthew's account of Jesus' baptism, which served as his ordination for ministry. Jesus began that public ministry in a crowd that surrounded John the Baptist at the Jordan River. John was a fiery young preacher who told people what they had to do and what they had to be. When he came out of the desert preaching repentance and baptism, the people flocked to the Jordan to be baptized. And he baptized everyone who would agree to change their ways. Jesus was there, and he wanted to be baptized, but the important thing about his being there was the people he was with. When all of those people were baptized, Jesus stepped forward to be baptized. Not because he needed to repent, not because he needed to change his ways. He stepped forward to be baptized so that he could be identified with the new gospel of salvation for all people, Jews and Gentiles. His baptism was and is the baptism of the people. His blessing from God, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased, is the blessing of all people. The body of Christ, the church. It matters that Jesus got into the same water and underwent the same act of baptism as all the people there. Because that's how we know that the incarnational love, blessings, and call that Jesus holds are the same love, blessings, and call that we hold, that all people who are baptized hold. Baptism, as John preached it, is a time of change. And so we can and should understand baptism as a new beginning. It's true that baptism is a very important moment, the moment when God lays claim to our lives. But it's also true that that we then spend the rest of our lives trying to figure out what that actually means. And so we discover that it's the journey which follows our baptism that allows us to live out the real importance of our baptismal moment. Baptism too often carries the connotation of having arrived. Those who weren't baptized as infants sometimes say to their ministers, I really want to be baptized and join the church. But first I need to get my life in order. Now, if that's what any of us were waiting for, we'd never be baptized. None of us would ever have our lives sufficiently in order to be baptized. 
But that's not what baptism is all about. It isn't something we earn. And it certainly isn't an indication or a sign that now somehow we have all the answers. Nothing could be further from the truth, especially in a church that baptizes infants. The sacrament of baptism, reaffirmation of baptism, and thanksgiving for baptism are all tangible opportunities for new beginnings, which we provide in our worship services. There are opportunities to see the world differently, to see each other differently, and even to see ourselves differently. There are opportunities for a fresh start when we can call into question, question our lives to this point. And remember, being a baptized believer isn't a trial-free membership. It is a rite of initiation into a way of life in which Jesus promised there would most assuredly be trials. Our observance and celebration of baptism of the Lord Sunday is very important to us because Jesus' baptism serves as a model for our own baptism. While some ultimate questions may have been answered when he was with John the Baptist in the Jordan River, Jesus continued to deal with questions and temptations throughout his life as we do. The baptism of Jesus is one of our favorite biblical stories because we love to hear how the heavens opened up. We love to imagine the dove descending. And we love to hear God's blessing on the sun. And truth be told, we'd like to think that something like that happened when we were baptized. And it did. What we should be prepared for is that our journey of faith, much like Jesus' Jesus' journey, continues to unfold, even after our baptism, as we try to figure out what our baptism means to and in our daily lives. We can begin to understand more about our own baptism by thinking of it in three ways. First, Baptism is about a new beginning. It's a fresh start, even when we are fairly comfortable and satisfied with our old lives. In this letter to the church, in his letter to the church to Rome, Paul said, We emerge from baptism to walk in newness of life. And now there are two ways to make something new. We can either start with nothing and make something new. Or we can start with what we already have and make that new. Baptism transforms our lives, and we do our very best to think and speak, live and act in ways that represent the image of Christ to the world. Baptism transforms selfish stinginess into generosity narrow-mindedness into thoughtful consideration, animosity and prejudice into love. Baptism transforms our fear of one another into a desire for true relationship and community, our suspicious motives into open and honest dialogue, and our timid hesitancy into daring boldness. Baptism transforms groups of people into congregations, gatherings of individuals into a family of brothers and sisters, and church services into times of meaningful worship and praise. And does all that happen the moment we're baptized? Of course not. It's what begins when we're baptized. Those are the kinds of things that happen throughout our lives as we continue to be open to what our baptism means to us, no matter when in our lives that baptism has taken place. 
The Christian life at its best is an ongoing transformation in which we are continually and continuously being shaped and reshaped by the presence of God in our lives. The second part of baptism is the good news that we've been included. And you may remember the episode of The Andy Griffith Show. Does anybody know The Andy Griffith Show? Okay. So you may remember this episode in which the Women's Historical Society had discovered that a living descendant of a revolutionary war hero was living right there in Mayberry. The news generated excitement and curiosity throughout the town as people made plans for recognizing the hero's relative. Barney Fife, know him? (laughs) Barney Fife, of course, twisted his own family tree to the point that he put himself in line for that honor. (laughs) <laughs> Big surprise. <laughs> the rest of the townspeople felt special just because someone among them was related to a hero. Everyone was shocked when the news came. A careful analysis of the genealogical records determined that the hero's descendant was Otis Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. You pass. You pass the Andy Griffith Show 101. <laughs> Otis Campbell, the town drunk. Despite instructions to find a substitute Otis for the presentation, the real Otis showed up for the ceremony. And when the ladies gave him the plaque, which they had engraved especially for him, Otis gave the plaque to the town. He said. Just because you're the descendant of a hero doesn't make you one. So I would like to present this plaque to the town of Mayberry, to which I am just proud to belong. And aren't we all just happy to belong? To be included? We can refer to this part of our baptism as incorporation. We're included, incorporated into the body of Christ. This incorporation came about as a result of a love that was determined to draw us in. And long after the act of baptism, that love holds us together without ranking any one of us more or less important. It allows us to disagree with one another without being unkind or without deserting one another. And it leads us to use our different gifts without any need whatsoever to compare them with someone else's gifts. The third part of baptism is ordination. With baptism comes the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit, and with the Spirit comes gifts to be used in the service of God. We too often view ministry as that which the minister does. That ministry is the priesthood of all believers. It's the work that all baptized believers engage in in response to the call and claim of God on our lives. Baptism was the ordination for Jesus. It was the beginning of his ministry. In the Presbyterian Church USA, we, ad- we ordain ministers of word and sacrament. We ordain ruling elders. And we ordain deacons. But we seem to have forgotten or removed from our understanding of baptism the, convic- the conviction that as Christians, each and every one of our lives is offered in service. When we enter the household of God, we do so with a vocation. The belief that God has called us to some particular work that will utilize the gifts that we've been given in the building up of the body and in the making of a better world. Whether your gifts are teaching, praying for others, working to help feed the hungry, helping a young person realize their potential, 
playing a musical instrument or extending hospitality. Whatever they are, they're meant to be used. When seen through the lens of our baptism, our work, our service, is not a burden. It is a joyful response to the love that we've experienced. When we serve, we will encounter others who've been incorporated into the body and will be challenged to see how our gifts complement the gifts of others. Also, as we work side by side, we'll find that our humility, gentleness, and patience will be tested from time to time. In those moments, we'll realize that our transformation is still in process, and we must not give up on it. In all of these things, baptism is a beginning. There is a story about a pastor's words to a baby shortly after she baptized her. No doubt the minister was speaking as much to the congregation as she was to the infant. These were her words. Little sister, by this act of baptism, we welcome you to a journey that will take your whole life. This isn't the end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of God's experiment with your life. What God will make of you, we don't know. Where God will take you, surprise you, we can't say. But this we do know, and this we do say. God is now, and will always be with you. God is now and will always be with each and every one of us as we live out our baptism. And for that great gift of grace and love, we will be eternally thankful. Let us pray. Ever speaking, God, as we give thanks this day for our baptism, help us to know that you are with us always And that each new day brings the opportunity for a new beginning on our baptismal journey. Through your Holy Spirit, take us places. Surprise us. Empower and transform us. That we would ever more fully use the gifts you've given us to live out our baptismal call and claim our identity as your beloved children proclaiming the good news to all people who are in need of your love. In Jesus' name, amen.
please join with me in our affirmation of faith, which is uh, Acts 1034b-43, to which is written in your bulletin. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins, through his name. Please be seated. Drawn to the light of Christ, made bold in the waters of baptism and filled with the Spirit, we lift up our prayers in confidence that God loves and listens to us. Let us pray. Voice of the Lord upon the waters. Speak to your whole church gathered together in worship. Give us the desire to honor the promises made by us and for us at baptism. Speak to your church universal and to our congregation. Strip away those things preventing us from fulfilling the mission you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Voice of the Lord who shakes the wilderness. Speak to those who are suffering from natural disasters and from the effects of climate change. Bring calm to our planet and make us instruments of wholeness in your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Voice of the Lord who sits enthroned above the flood. Speak to the leaders of this world. Equip them with humility, wisdom, and a deep desire to work for peace and equality for all people. We ask your blessings upon all peacemakers as well as all peacekeepers as we continue to pray for the people and leaders of Ukraine and of Russia. Lord, in your mercy. Voice of the Lord who bursts forth in lightning flashes. Speak a word of comfort and reassurance to all those in need, especially those who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who are depressed, and those who are addicted. Illumine their darkness with the light of your healing presence. Bless those who are grieving and all those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. We pray today for those on the prayer list of North Springfield Church, for Rosemary, for Kim, for Terry, and for all those we now name in our hearts, either silently or aloud.
Lord, in your mercy. Voice of the Lord who makes Lebanon skip like a calf. Speak the word of resurrection to us, that we might rejoice in the glory into which you have gathered all the saints who now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, who made us, formed us, and calls us by name, we ask all these things, and whatever else you see we need, with a sure and certain hope in your goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. As people who have passed through the waters of baptism, let us make our grateful offering to God, our Redeemer.
who are the baptized. You who are the baptized. Go now to offer God's joy to those who have no hope. To serve at the side of Jesus those who are in any kind of need. To be the Spirit's voice in the world calling out for justice and peace. And to be witnesses of God's love by embracing others in Christ's name. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day your whole life long. And the people of God say, Amen.